Hey, what's up guys? My name is Mike. Most of you will know of me as Onslaught. That is my Xbox Live Gamer Tag. Welcome to part two of field stripping a field stripping video. Basically, this is a little series that I'm doing to kind of show you guys or I guess give you a tutorial on how I go about editing my videos and my gameplays that I put up on my channel and uh, other channels, you know, such as Machinima Respawn and, uh, and Huppet Gaming. So, if you've seen part one, you kind of have an idea of what uh, what is to come. If you haven't, you know, I would suggest checking out part one before uh, you watch part two here. Um, what what I'm about to cover in this video is using Sony Vegas Pro 9 to actually edit uh, the raw gameplay footage that I record um, from my capture device, okay? Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to cover uh, using Adobe Photoshop. Um, in this video, I've already done this once and uh, going through the whole thing, it took about 40 minutes and uh, I decided that's just too long. It created a huge file and uh, it's something that I really don't want to, you know, I don't want to mess with a file that big. So part two is going to cover using Sony Vegas. Um, part three is going to cover using Adobe Photoshop and then my final rendering. So um, stick around for part three, you know, if, uh, if you find part two here entertaining. Um, I'm not sure. It'll be coming up in, uh, in a few days after this video. So... Let's go ahead and open up a brand new Sony Vegas Pro 9 file. Um, I'm opening just an, an empty one so you guys can see kind of the full process of how uh, how I go about the, doing this. Um, a funny thing actually happened. If you've seen part one, I showed you guys the gameplay clip that I had intended on using for, for this tutorial. And uh, unfortunately, I deleted or lost that clip at, at some point during uh, the past week or so. Um, so what I've done, I've gone in the theater mode and I found another clip. So um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the clip here in a second. Um, basically, there's two ways to import a video. Pretty straightforward. You know, you can drag and drop the video right into your project media window here. Um, or you can use this little button here to import media. And then you just go on your computer wherever you know that you have your gameplay saved. And, uh, and you just select it. Like we can bring in a smiley face, for example, if we, uh, if we wanted to. Um, all right, so our gameplay footage is in here. This is just the raw footage that was recorded from my Aver Media um, HD USB PVR. Okay, so here is our actual gameplay. Um, what I did, I just dragged and dropped that into my timeline, and it created two um, two layers here. Basically, a video layer and then an audio layer, um, and these are synced up together. They're automatically coming grouped together because they're part of the same file. Um, there are a couple basic things that I always like to do whenever I bring in a, a new clip. Okay, this doesn't just apply to my field stripping videos. Um, the first thing I like to do is uh, with my audio. If you right click. The, uh, the audio portion here, go to switches and go to normalize. I'll zoom in so you guys can see a little better. Um, notice the um, kind of the peaks and valleys and the, uh, the intensity of this um, audio wave here. If we right click this, go to switches, normalize. See how it made those a little more pronounced? Um, basically that just bumps up the um, the volume of your audio. Um, be careful if you do that with your commentary though because it will pick up any background noise. Um, it's pretty safe to do that with uh, with your, your raw gameplay recorded footage. It just gives you you know more room to play with the volume whenever you're doing your, your editing. Um, the other thing that I like to do has to go with has to deal with the video here. So if we right click our video line, go to switches and disable resample. Um, I don't want to go into a lot of detail about what that actually does, uh, but if you've ever seen somebody's gameplay and it looks like there's like a shadowing effect or in between frames you know it looks like there's like an overlaying it looks kind of muddy and not real sharp it's probably because they had some type of resampling going on and it just it didn't you know it didn't work out right so if you always disable resampling you're not going to have any problem with that um, it doesn't affect your file size or anything like that either so it's just going to give you an overall sharper uh, better end product so um, the other thing that I'd like to do, this is the last thing I'm going to show you guys as far as the initial kind of editing. If you guys, you'll probably want to bump this up to, to full screen also. Um, can you notice that little black line there along the right side? I bet if I move to a different portion of the gameplay. There we go. That's a little better. Um, look at that black line right, right along the right side. And then look at it. It's on the base also. I always like to get rid of that. And it's really easy to do. Okay. You click on here at the end of... Uh, your video file, there's a little option to, to use uh, the event pan and crop tool. So if we click on that, it's going to bring up this window here. Um, basically, and I'll kind of show you guys what's going on here, explain this real quick for, for those of you that aren't familiar with it. Um, you see this little dash kind of outline here? This is what my video is actually showing. Wherever this guy is, um, I don't really know the, the best way to explain this. Whatever is shown in this viewport here is what is shown on the screen. So watch what happens as I drag this over the video. See how that video is coming into play there? That's because the frame 
or the focal point is now covering that part of, uh, of this clip here. So what I like to do is, we'll go back to the very beginning. All you have to do is pick any corner on here and just slightly adjust it. Now pay attention to the black line there on the side. If we just slightly pull that in, notice how it got rid of the black line. That's all you have to do. Um, uh, once you get that kind of adjusted to the, uh, you know, the amount that you want, you can easily go up here, just type in, um, type in crop or type in uh, remove black line. You know, type in any type of description you want, and click that save button, and you can save it as a preset in your list here. So it'll always be here. So anytime you edit a new video, all you do is go to the event pan crop button, and then you come in here, and you, for me, I saved it as crop full. So I hit that, and it automatically crops it exactly to that saved uh, ratio that I saved, you know, months back, and uh, and the black line is gone from the side. So those are kind of the uh, the initial things that I like to do with the clips. Now um, I'm not going to show you guys in in this part here, part two, what I do as far as my um, you know my track effects and uh, any type of um, any type of this stuff, my plugin stuff. I'll show you guys that in part three because I don't do any of that until the end of my editing process. All right, so now we want to clip out the uh, the portion of the gameplay here that we're going to use as like our, our normal gameplay. So I'm going to go ahead and see the audio spike there. You know, that's a good reference for kind of when this clip is going to begin. So we're going to go ahead and play this guy out just so I can talk to you guys real quick about what I'm doing here with this video. All right, so it's going to be a little AK-74U action. It's basically just a little spree here with the gun. Um, when I originally watched this clip, you know, I wanted to talk about a few different things that, that happened throughout this little session. Um, but uh, time-wise, I'm only going to really be able to break down and look at one session, which is going to be here at the end, which is basically that little fake-out move right there. Okay, I want to talk about kind of what I did there, what I was thinking, and why I was able to do that. Um, even though that guy almost did kill me, um, I want to be able to talk about how I kind of faked him out and had him, you know, really unaware of where I was coming from. So what we're going to do is we're going to split out that piece, and that's going to be, you know, if you've seen a field stripping video, that's going to represent like our normal gameplay. Um, we're going to use it, do that using the split command, which you can go to edit up here and then go directly to split, or you can just hit S, which is the keyboard shortcut, Bam, and it just uh, it puts a split line there in between the the two clips. So we can go ahead and delete that first little portion. We actually don't uh, don't need that anymore. And then we're going to go here right to pretty much that last little bit of audio there. You can kind of see it. We're going to go ahead and split that guy as well. So that's going to be our, our normal clip. Uh, the clip that I want to use is like my breakdown analysis kind of portion is going to be this guy. It's kind of an overhead view. Um, it's going to be good for me, you know, for me drawing arrows and highlighting things that I can kind of show you guys a little more in depth how I use Photoshop in, uh, in part three. So once again, we're going to use the split command. We can delete this little portion here. See that guy in the chunk in the middle? We can go ahead and delete him. We don't need that. And I'm going to zoom in here right to about that last little audio bleep. And we're going to use the split command one more time. So here's what we have right now. Okay, we have our normal gameplay here at the front. Now we have kind of our overlay kind of detail. I want to actually undo that there. All right, we have our overlay kind of detail guy that we're going to use. Now, if you've ever worked with any type of editing program, you kind of have an understanding of layers, I would assume. And basically, layers work. Um, any layer that's above another one in this column is going to take precedent over it. So watch what happens here. I want to drag that out of you down there. Okay, so now we have our our little clip overlay portion is on his in his own line here, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drag both of these directly to the top. Okay, now what that what's that what that has done is putting has given this clip priority. See it right there over the uh, the normal gameplay. So watch what happens as we play through here. See how it switched automatically to. Um, to our clip there that's because it has uh, precedent all right so now I'm gonna minimize this audio just so I can make our kind of working space up there a little bigger for you guys to to see and I actually had somebody ask me how how you know I adjust your layout your layouts really easy to adjust all you do is you put your cursor on here and you can drag and you know you can adjust all of these things to your liking if you find something that you really like um, once you get it set up right you know you go to and I'm kinda off topic at the moment but uh, just a little helpful hint go to view go to windows and you can save a layout you know I have a couple here saved a field stripping layout and a YouTube layout um, but it'll automatically save it so anytime you want you go back to that window layout and it'll adjust all your windows to however you had it saved 
All right, so back on topic now, let's get to the point in this video where we actually want our overlay to come into play. All right, so basically I want it to come in right after I kill this guy and I've started kind of walking away. Um, right about there will be a good shot. We'll go ahead and get Holiday Doc in the picture there. Um, once again, we're gonna use our split command, so a simple S, uh, S command there. Um, one thing I wanna do right now, I'll talk a little bit more about this in there here in a second. I wanna save a snapshot to a file. Basically, this creates a screenshot of whatever is on, in my, my viewport here, whatever is um, going on in uh, on the screen. So go ahead and hit that. Saving it as image one is fine for the moment. Okay, and that see it put it in our project media there. So now we want to drag the end of the clip kind of out of the way, and we want to pull our um, our overlay right into play. And we're going to drag this guy right to the end of our overlay clip. So now you can kind of see what's going to happen here. So right after the kill, we're going to switch to our aerial perspective and do our overlays. Now, if you've seen my field stripping videos again, um, you'll notice I like to do typically some type of transition. You know, it's some type of sliding action where this guy slides in from the left or slides in from the right. Um, let's go ahead and look at how we do that. Um, basic, basically, we're going to use the event pan crop tool again. So if we click that. Um, the first thing you want to do, okay, notice this little line here. This is our position line, okay? Right here at the beginning, this is called a, uh, it's called a keyframe, okay? What you do is, at the very beginning of our clip, you know, we want this overlay to not be on the screen. So we're going to drag our focal point, drag it to wherever you want, you know, just so that it gets the, the, the image or the, uh, the gameplay off of or out of the focal point there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag this little marker here see how our timelines moving we're gonna drag him to about one second away from the original time so our original time is 29.06 that time is when let's see if I can show you guys uh, not really it's when during our overall video you know this clip starts uh, we're gonna drag him to I guess 3006 slide up slide down let me use the arrow keys to get exactly where we want. And we're going to add a keyframe, okay? Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna slide at that keyframe. We wanna slide our focal point. All I'm doing is clicking on this guy, left clicking, and, and I'm moving him around. If you hold shift, it's gonna keep him, you know, attached to these little grid lines you can see there. So I click on him and hold shift. Basically gonna slide him back into, um, back into covering up our gameplay there. So now watch what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that for a second. So now watch what happens as I, I'm just using the arrow key right now to show you guys, but watch what's going to happen. You see how this guy's sliding in from the left side? Basically that's what he's going to do. I don't know if I play this, if you guys are going to be able to see. Yeah, there you go. Bam. Nice and easy. That's what it's going to do. So we need to add that same slide effect at the end. You know, we don't, we don't want that clip to just disappear. We want him to, uh, to slide out at the end of the, the gameplay as well. So um, once again, you know, we're just going to drag our focal point off to the, to the left side there. And that's going to automatically create a keyframe here at the end. We're going to take note of our time at 48.45. We're going to drag him in to 47.45 now. Right about there, and we're going to add another keyframe, and we're going to drag him back into the frame there. All right, so watch what happens here. See in, our, in that back screen there, notice as I'm dragging him along the timeline. So at the end, you know, he's got to slide out of... Uh, slide out of view and then we're going to get back to our normal gameplay so notice what happens though okay as at the end of this clip right before the overlay comes in it becomes a black screen right there okay so now's where the uh, the image file comes into play okay if we zoom out a little bit here um, if I drag and drop this image file right into our, our normal project media line Notice what that does. Basically, that kind of freezes time. If you ever are doing something in your gameplay and you actually want to pause the gameplay, um, this is how I do it, okay? I'm going to drag that guy over to the right just for a second here. Notice what's going to happen. So if I hit play, gameplay is going normal. Just finish that guy, bam, it stops, okay? That is because it's right now it's just reading that, that JPEG that we created earlier. So let me zoom in here. It was actually a little... You guys might not have noticed it, but there's a little black, uh, black bleep there, and that was because that guy wasn't exactly lined up where he needed to be. Um, so now we're going to drag our clip back in, and uh, we're going to go ahead and preview this guy. And make sure everything is uh, is moving nicely. 
bam, bam. Now comes in our overlay. Our overlay is going to play out. And, uh, and that's basically it, guys. Okay, part three, I'm going to go over using Adobe Photoshop, doing my overlays, things like that, and then the final rendering and the final um, track effects that I actually add to all of my clips. Um, you know, as always, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to post them up in the, uh, in the comment section below. Send me a PM, whatever it is. Um, if there's something you still want to see or you're looking forward to in part three, um, post that up as well. Um, I hope this was informative, and uh, I guess I'll catch up with you guys later, and I'll see you in part three, and, uh, and I'll see you on Xbox Live. Later, guys.